when you get that notification of a working incident of a second alarm, a third alarm in the middle of the night, you're right up out of bed, the adrenaline's flowing, you're going somewhere, you don't know what's happening. There's uncertainty. In some cases, it may be a dangerous circumstance that, that you need to confront and encounter, but you know, every time it's, it's unique, every time it's interesting, every time it's a new challenge. Hello, my name is Chris Conkle. I've been a fire department photographer for over 25 years. My background, I was born in the District of Columbia uh, in Washington, D.C. When I was relatively young, my parents moved to the West Coast, uh, to Santa Monica. Uh, and so I've lived in Santa Monica for about the last 35 years. I went to uh, elementary and, and high school here in the Los Angeles area. Then for, uh, for college, I went up to the Bay Area, to UC Berkeley and studied civil engineering at UC Berkeley. My, my relationship with, with uh, various uh, fire departments in Southern California is as a volunteer. So I volunteer uh, my time to document their emergency incidents, to document trainings, to document public relations events that they have, to document other aspects of their history, recruit graduations, that sort of thing. You know, normally during the day, I've got my day job as a civil engineer. So during that time, I'm focused on that, and I have I have time at night, right, to be able to respond um, to incidents. Fires are, are typically at night because something's smoldering in a can somewhere, and then it then it breaks out, you know, at two, three in the morning. In my mind, you know, I think there's a couple different things that I'm I'm looking for. One, I'm looking for shot of the firefighters working. Right, where I can see that, that they're really working and doing the job that, you know, that we understand that, that they're going to do. Their face to, to capture that work. And a spectacular backdrop, a column of smoke or a, a large fire, right? that's a great shot. If I can add into that a rescue going on, for instance, you know, that's really what we're trying to go for. I mentioned the historical aspect. Right? If I can capture something that's a, a really true historical moment, uh, an important fire, then that would even add to the image. There was a significant fire at the St. Gabriel Mission on July 11th, 2020. The fire was early in the morning. The fire completely destroyed the roof structure of the original sanctuary of a church. As I arrived, the fire was mostly out, but it was still a quite shocking scene. This was a landmark building, which I was familiar with. I wanted to convey the nature of the damage in my images. Uh, when I got a view inside, I recalled an old photo that I had always remembered of a uh, Los Angeles City firefighter overhauling the charred remains of a church. The aesthetic of that photo, even though I, had, I haven't seen it in, in 30 years, had always stuck with me and guided this, this shot a bit. Technical details, uh, 60th of a second at F5, probably could have used a little bit more depth of field in hindsight. The firefighters uh, from Alhambra on the right side of the image were well lit through the, uh, the door opening and the charred beams in the center of the image reminded me of the, the image of the LAFD firefighter. I like how the water trickles down in the foreground of the image, leaving the prismatic streaks overall the image uh, succeeded in showing that while the church had been badly damaged, it would survive, and the important artifacts around the altar in the background had likewise survived. Fontana Pallet Yard Fire. This photo is from a fifth alarm pallet yard fire a few years ago out in Fontana. These fires can be quite spectacular. This one had an incredible volume of fire. When you have a fire like this at night, it's important to expose for the flame, which can be a bit tricky. As far as settings, you want to be fully manual, typically a mid-range aperture in the neighborhood of f8 to f11 to get the type of this type of detail in the fire. This is at the lower end of that range at f8. You also want to make sure that you've got an adequately short exposure here, 1 320th of a second, so you can freeze the movement in the flame. 
otherwise you just get a blurry mass. Of course here I want to convey hot in this image because it was really a, a hellish scene. Uh, as you can see in the reflection off the ground, uh, the embers lying everywhere on the ground, the steam rising uh, from the ground as well, from, the, from all the radiant heat. Uh, and in this case, uh, I even caught a fire whirl in progress on the right hand side of the image. This photo is from a house fire in the north end of Long Beach. Firefighters here are working to ventilate the roof over a well-involved attic fire. Here it's not a, a straight silhouette shot like the, the previous one. While using available light from the fire, I'm trying here to bring a little bit more detail out in the firefighter by using a, a slower shutter speed. Again, using fully manual control, F9.5 at a 60th of a second. In a shot like this, the modern high ISO performance is, is really helpful. Um, here, ISO at, at 4000. There's not a, a manual which tells you how to produce these type of shots. You just need to vary combinations and get a little bit lucky within the time that you have that the subject is in front of you. In this case, we've got a little movement in the firefighter's rubbish hook, um, but you can see good detail in the firefighter's face and in the background. Uh, compromise here, of course, is the loss of detail in the flame. I also always like flying embers to give a, a sense of action. I was on my way home from work and I heard this fire going down in Lakewood. The firefighters were having difficulty getting all the pockets of fire out, so they were forced to use foam. That provided the ingredients for an unusual image. A long exposure made the foam dripping down from the beam over the garage door opening look almost like a curtain enveloping the firefighter, highlighting how dirty a job this can be. This photo ended up being used on the cover of an industry publication, Fire Rescue Magazine. It was selected by their photo editor at the time, John Centrino, who was one of my favorite fire photographers and also a firefighter for the city of Boston. As I was getting ready to leave the scene, I caught this second image of the firefighter uh, who was the subject of the first image, uh, which highlights that sometimes getting dirty like this on a fire can be a bit of fun as well. This photo of the Woolsey fire is an example of always being ready. In this case, it was Friday, November 10th, 2018. I was on a flight from Long Beach up to the Bay Area for the day as part of my job as a civil engineer, and multiple large wildfires had been burning up and down the state, including the Camp Fire in Paradise and the Woolsey Fire in Malibu, which had started the previous afternoon. I'm a frequent traveler on this flight, so I knew that we'd be flying directly over the area of the Woolsey Fire. I sat in the window seat, as I usually do, uh, but this time on the left-hand side of the plane to get a good view of the fire with the sun on my back. As we approached Malibu, it was clear that the fire was blowing up in a big way, and it would be a very tough day for firefighters. In the image, we can see fire all the way from Bell Canyon, west of the San Fernando Valley in the foreground, uh, down south to the 101 freeway in the background around Calabasas, uh, where, the, where the large header is. The scale of the active fire was shocking to see in person, and I think the image conveys that well. The fire would reach the Pacific Ocean in the far background later that day. I took this photo with my iPhone, uh, another example of where the best camera is the one that you have with you at any time. Here's another dramatic pallet yard fire to bring it all together. Uh, pallet yards tend to burn spectacularly when they catch fire and they're difficult to put out. This one was about half a city block of pallets on fire in the Florence Graham area near Los Angeles. Firefighters were having difficulty accessing the fire in this area due to a solid metal fence that surrounded the perimeter of the yard. In the first shot, we see the drama that rotary saws can introduce. What we're seeing here is the trail that each of the sparks from the saw is taking as the shutters open. The longer the shutters open, the longer the trail. We want long trails while still having a fast enough shutter speed to keep the image sharp. In this case, a 20th of a second at F11. In the second image, I'm using available light again, exposing for the fire, but also getting some detail in the foreground uh, using the sparks from the rotary saw. 
The sparks are reflecting off the water that's accumulated in the street from all of the heavy streams that the firefighters are using. My rubber boots allowed me to position myself in the middle of the, of the water in the street to get this shot. When we think of firefighters, we think of putting water on the fire as an essential element, but there's all these other tools which they're masters of. And in, and in this shot, we see the rotary saw and its effects highlighted in combination with the, the large flames and the embers shower. Why is photography so fun? I, I think it's, it, it's something where I wanna be able to, to take what I see and, and record that and share that with others. And so I get a real, I get a real rush out of that. Taking that um, image in your mind's eye and, and presenting it in a way that captures it and that you can show to others, that's, that's why it's fun. A funny thing that some people comment on is my father and I both uh, are involved in, in fire department photography and we kinda, I think, grew into it together. Uh, feeding off each other in this interest. You know, obviously getting up in the middle of the night, um, going, to, going to incidents as a, almost like a second job, um, it's a difficult thing. So we support each other. Hey, you know, uh, I heard there's this thing going on or hey, we need to get over here to do this or, you know, as well on the safety aspect of things, making sure that uh, we do things safely and that we're, we're, you know, appropriately prepared. So my father and I work on that together. So this is, a, this is what's called a, a truck vault. And as I mentioned, it's got my photography gear and my um, personal protective equipment uh, inside it. So open up the, the lower drawer here. Uh, starting on this side. So here's my, um, uh, my main workhorse camera um, at this point. This is a Nikon uh, Z6. It's a mirrorless camera. Um, I've, I've got, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Nikon shooter, of course, with Nikon lenses. Um, this is a, a 28 to 300 uh, street sweeper um, type lens um, that I pretty much use for, for everything um, uh, on the fire ground or, or um, in other circumstances. I, I like the mirrorless camera. I'm getting to, getting to know it. I, I'm transitioning from, a, from, a, from an SLR. So uh, back up also a, a Nikon, of course, with this sort of work. Um, you're in difficult environments. You may have you may have difficulty with your camera. So an important thing is uh, part of that being ready, being um, being ready to capture those images is making sure that you have equipment that's working. Um, so always important to have a backup uh, a backup body. Obviously, you always always good to have a Fix 50 um, with you for uh, for portrait uh, portrait work, uh, and then. Uh, on occasion, uh, I'll use a, a, a little bit longer lens uh, when, I've, when I'm dealing with, uh, with aircraft that sort of, or something that's, you know, that's, that's quite far away. Um, but again, mostly with the, with the body that's, that's, that's mounted on there, um, typically. Flash is important um, at, uh, given what we're doing at night. Um, there's really no, as far as uh, technical aspects, there's no cookbook for fire ground photography at night. Um, a lot of work on manual, uh, a lot of work uh, with, with, with bracketing images to make sure that you get something that's, um, that's usable because the lighting conditions are so difficult. And flash is part of that. The, the, the rest of, the, the, rest of the, um, uh, the drawer here is, is mostly personal protective equipment. Obviously, um, I've got, a, I've got a, a toolbox here with my tools because this is a, a, a working vehicle and we might need something to, might need to repair something. Um, water's important. Uh, for hydration, both on the on the fire ground and then in a wildland fire, uh, of course. So, the wildland fire, I'd carry water with me, um, or I'm coming back here to the vehicle um, to drink. I've got um, a strap so I can I can have two cameras uh, over my uh, over my shoulders. Uh, some additional uh, Nomex um, brush jacket. As you see, I'm wearing a, a, a brush jacket here, and that's kind of my standard uh, PPE for any. Uh, any structure fire or wildland fire incident. I've also got uh, Nomex uh, pants and, and boots on. It's important when you're on these scenes to be safe, right? That's really the most important thing. Uh, throw the photographs out, we need to do this safely. Um, uh, and so PP uh, is paramount. Um, of course, we need to protect our head and we need to protect our eyes. So I'm always gonna have 
uh, safety glasses with me when I'm at a, a structure fire or wildland fire um, incident. At a wildland fire incident, I, I've got an additional uh, set of goggles that'll keep, um, keep dust, uh, um, smoke, ash um, uh, out of my eyes. So this is my, this is my brush uh, helmet. And then bring that out here, take a look at that um, with, the, you know, with, the, with the goggles and a nape strap. And then um, here's a, one of my, um, you know, my structure fire uh, helmets. So that's, that's paramount importance. I've also got some, um, you know, just my, uh, um, my regular hard hat and high-vis um, vest if you're working around traffic. Uh, of course, that's also uh, important. Um, boots as well. An additional piece of uh, personal protective equipment is my um, web gear. So this is used on, on um, wildland fires and it's worn, it's worn like a pack over your shoulders. Um, on one side, we've got a, a place for a water bottle and then a, a storage for miscellaneous equipment in, in the back. And then the, uh, the essential piece of equipment here is a fire safety shelter. So this is a piece of, of safety equipment, of, of required safety equipment for um, wildland fires. If you're on the, the wildland fire um, line, you need, a, you need this fire safety shelter. And that's a, a, a last ditch emergency shelter that you can use in the event of a, um, uh, being burned over by a, by a fire. So let me, let me take you through the, the top row of, of drawers here. Uh, so of course, communications is, is critically important um, in this. Um, both for understanding what's going on so we can get the right shot and then also for safety. Um, so I have a number of different um, radios uh, for different agencies. These are UHF um, um, radios so I can and listen and communicate um, with, uh, with other photographers. Um, and then also in this drawer I've got um, uh, tripods and, and uh, um, uh, related things including a, a pry bar because you never know, you might need that. Um, on, the, on the top here, um, more radios, more scanners, um, extra batteries uh, for radios, uh, eyewear uh, as well, and then uh, all the miscellaneous doodads and, and knickknacks um, uh, that you need for, for, um, for photography and for communications um, up here on the, on the top. Uh, on, on, in, this, in this drawer over here, this is a, a first aid kit. Of course, that's that's important. So, a customized first aid kit. We may be out in in um, uh, areas for an extended period of time and having to operate um, uh, on our own uh, and, and support ourselves. And then uh, maps, of course. So, um, in addition to, to digital maps, got the good old uh, Thomas guides um, for all of uh, all of Southern California. Um, that's important. The um, in the middle drawer here. This is actually a. a essentially a mobile, a mobile office. Um, so I can set up with my, my laptop here um, to do some quick uh, editing if I need to or, or um, communicating. And then this, this also underneath um, has, a, has a whiteboard. Um, so I use this primarily in my, my day job um, when I'm out on a site um, uh, coordinating. Uh, but it, it, this, uh, this box came from a vehicle, um, a, a sheriff's department vehicle, where they were using that uh, as a command post um, type setup. And then I've got um, other antennas and, and long items uh, in here uh, as well. So um, lastly, of course, keeping batteries charged um, is important. So various battery chargers for cameras and, um, and other rechargeable batteries. So that's a tour of the, the back end of, uh, of my rig. We have limited, limited training that we go through um, with the departments uh, periodically. Most of it is, is, is self-paced, self-taught, essentially. So, um, you know, relying on the, the interest of the, of the volunteers and, and, you know, in, in learning and making sure that you're doing things in the right way. The most important thing um, in being at a, a fire scene is, is safety, right? So, uh, that, that is something that's expected of the photographers, you know, essentially we're there uh, to document, we're, we're, we're not there to become part of uh, uh, the incident, right? And so we need to make sure that uh, we're dressed appropriately, uh, that we make sure that we're in the right spot where we're not going to be interfering with any kind of operation, um, while we want to be close to make sure that we, you know, that we get the, the, the shots that we need.
It's an interesting hobby. It's an interesting uh, advocation, I guess you'd say. Um, there's across, across the United States, you'll, you'll, you'll find that there are a large number of people that are actually have an interest in the fire service um, as, as what we call fire buffs. And many of those uh, are also, also have an interest in, in photography. Uh, in, the, in the Northeast, uh, on the West Coast, particularly in Los Angeles, um, you know, there's kind of denser concentrations of that. My advice for, for folks that were trying to get into this um, would be uh, to learn a little bit about the, the fire service, um, to interact with uh, your local um, fire department, with your local fire station, and, and with the, the public affairs or the public information folks um, with your fire department, because you know, you, you'll need that relationship to, um, to be able to do this.